came and um, came down to the Three Falcons uh, immediately after the end of play. Uh, we got to meet loads of you guys. Uh, even more of you guys came in and had a meal, had a beer, and um, had enough of me and Nick's and then come and talk to us. If you ever see us and want to chat to us, don't uh, definitely feel like you can come up to us. We love talking about Duncan cricket. It's our it's our whole entire lives. Um, I bought it everyone around me um, about it we're doing it all again at the oval as well uh we are kind of setting up base at the gladstone arms which is just by uh borough tube station which i know it's a couple of stops up from the oval but um i wanted to kind of keep the same buzz off um a kind of desi pub um the beers are great there the food's the food sensational as well. We'll be there on the second day to the fifth day. On the first day, we'll be at the Trinity, uh, which is right by Borough Station as well, um, just just around the corner. Um, I'll be there from soon after the close of play. Uh, you may even get to meet my dad if you can rustle up a ticket somehow as well. I um, also want to say a big thank to Russell Arnold to keep you know, tweeting and posting and uh, putting it on his Insta uh, account as well. Like, you know, the, the, the whole point of this podcast is to have a forum for people to come and discuss Sri Lanka cricket, right? There's no wrong opinions. There's no bad opinions. There's, there's like, it's just for, for the love of the game, essentially. We want to build a community. So it's great, I think, to give us all an opportunity to kind of hang out and meet up together. I think that's um, th- that's absolutely brilliant. We're looking forward to seeing you at the Glad of the Trinity, whatever day you're coming. Bring your papare as well. Bring your trumpet, bring your drum, bring your flag. It's the Oval. It's not as stuffy as as lords and of course if you are going down don't don't forget i will be in attendance so if you're bringing shorty just consider me a member of the family as well <laughs> drop me a t- like drop me a whatsapp or if you've got my number drop me a whatsapp you know tweet me insta me like bring aside mark machado i have your mutton rolls i will come down and find you and i will eat mutton rolls with you and tell you what i think about the the last wicket that has just been lost and what a mistake uh these guys have pulled on whatever day you're there. Um, talking about WhatsApp, we've got WhatsApp group as well. Join that. That's where I'm, we're putting in updates all through the day, every day when Sri Lanka are playing. Remember, we've got this test. Then after that, we've got a Women's World Cup. We've got New Zealand in test matches. We've got South Africa. We've got ODIs against the West Indies. There's a lot of cricket yet to come. It doesn't stop because the English summer is over. Um, Sri Lanka will live for cricket and cricket lives for Sri Lanka. So we'll keep on keeping on. We've also got a newsletter as well, Dominic and Nick, and Estelle do some cracking pieces on that. And that's worth following and subscribing to that. And also, finally... Just remember to tell your friends and family about the Marillion because we want to, as I say, we're a community and we want to keep growing. Try and follow us on all the social pages that you that you can find us on as well. Right, Dom, two test matches, two losses. We came away from the Old Trafford game going, we've won, we've won some hearts here. Um, the kind of, I thought the motive was to get to Lords and start playing with, you know, not just with our heart, but with our minds. Mm. I'm not totally convinced they did that. Yeah, I think one of the things that struck me, I think Dinesh Chandamal, and you were you were there, um, was giving a press conference two days before the test. It said something like, you know, we're really happy with how we played um, in the first test match. And yes, we as fans are happy with how they played, um, given their expectations. But I think as players, you kind of have to have a different mindset, right? Losing a game should be something that you don't want to do, especially when it's there for the taking, right? And I think... We talked about this on the last podcast that there were several moments where that game was there for the taking. I think coming into the second match, there was a little bit of complacency. Okay, we've proved ourselves as a worthy opponent. And um, they made mistakes, mental, uh, physical, at b- batting, bowling, everything. Um, it was a subpar show, in my opinion. We'll talk about some of the kind of details of it. But I'm curious, Mark, what stood out to you most watching this test and what did you notice as being different sort of from the sort of good performance we had in the first test and and um this more mediocre performance we had in the second so actually when you look at it i think the second test had had kind of a better all-round performance Mm -hmm. and in a in a way the kind of difference was joe root right i mean he scored exactly almost exactly the amount of runs of which england won by and on top of that, you can kind of add Gus Atkinson and Sri Lanka being really just not being able to bowl out England in that first innings, right? 
which makes you think about Sri Lanka's decision to bowl. Uh, we can go into that in a bit. I've got a clip of what DDS said in the press conference afterwards we can play as well. Um, but what, the thing I walked away from that thinking is England's had two standout batting performances, right? Or three, because kind of Joe Root did it twice and Gus yep. Atkinson would, would look, look like a an incredible all-rounder when he's not really... Well, we're told he's not meant to be an all-rounder. Maybe this is the beginning of a of a batting career for him. I'm not. I don't know. Um, and I just felt what was really frustrating that on that fourth day, and, he, and even you know in, in the third day as well, when when Trump came into bat, is that you kind of felt like right, our guys are starting to make starts, but no one's pushing on. Right? Mm. You look at that um, the the innings list. For the you know the scorecard sorry for the four days the innings list and what the uh, Dimuth made a fifty five Angelo made a thirty six uh, Chandy uh, made fifty eight DDS made fifty Milan made forty three I know Milan's again he's not meant to be a batter but he seems to be able to score runs in England for whatever reason but you're like our four most experienced batters there have made starts and mm. none of them are pushing on um, to to get to this point and. You know, to come away from from a Lord's Test, which are so rare for Sri Lanka uh, these days, increasingly rare, and for none of our batters to have gotten to the honours list, I think is an absolute disaster. Right? I had, I was dreaming, and you know, I'm massively optimistic as well. I have, admittedly, mm-hmm. but I was dreaming of two or three players getting onto the honours list, players batting for all, for a whole day if they need to. We, you know, some of some of Sri Lanka's greatest moments the the moments that we as fans treasure the most have been on that Lord's pitch, right? Um, there was people in this side who had multiple tests at, at Lord's and people who had, had centuries at Lord's already, right? Mm-hmm. There's people who are, you know, and, and, and we'll, this is all up for debate and we'll talk about this more during the pod, but there's people on, on social media saying maybe it's time to, to move out the old guard. The problem is you look at the school cards, you look at the schools for the last kind of two or three years and, and there doesn't seem to be any dip in at least batting for from a lot of these players. So, and and I don't think there's anyone knocking on the door to come in to take their place. There just doesn't seem to be somebody, or maybe it was just a one-off thing at Lords, and maybe Kamindu was the man at, at Old Trafford or whatever. But there would there doesn't seem to be a, a kind of talisman. Somebody you know is going to come in and is going to win us this match. Neither right. with bat, neither with bat, nor with ball. And I think. That's really the difference between these two sides because when England need a, a wicket, I think they could in the first test they could turn to Mark Wood, the second test they could turn to Ollie Stone. With 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 the bat, I actually think Sri Lanka did quite well trying to cope with England's top order and even Brook and um Brook and Jamie Smith, it was Joe Root that did all the damage both times around and and I don't know. There needs to be a massive inquiry about how Gus Atkinson got all those runs and why we didn't have a plan for that. Um, so that's what I kind of came away being actually quite frustrated with because I, in terms of like skill set, I don't mm-hmm. think there's much difference between the two sides. I think, you know, between the two teams, you go through it and, you know, I think Angelo, Dimmer, Chandy probably could get into the England side. Um at this point, yeah. possibly even possibly even DDS, um, but again, our top order didn't really fire. Uh, I know Dimmuth made a fifty, and the batter was much of a muchness. And it's this is a bat a side where the batting should be better than the bowling, right? So if the bowlers getting hit around, that's fine. If the bowlers are are having a bad day, that's fine because the batting should rescue it. And at the moment, the batter is just kind of doing in that second innings, kind of getting us a what I would consider kind of past score for that wicket. We've fallen behind in our first batting innings. And, you know, you're thinking maybe something could happen. And, you know, people will be saying we're just not good enough. But I generally don't think the talent between the two teams is that big. I'm not sure if it's a kind of... I don't want to say it's a mentality thing because actually I think it's... Losing means more to the Sri Lanka team than it means to England. I think, you know, this... England don't produce vintage cricket teams, right? They haven't done for a long, 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 long time. And it's a cricket culture that is used to losing test matches and home test matches and test series and, and, and all sorts of things. But I think there's several... Sorry, I'm just I'm ranting now, but 
I suppose that's what this whole platform's for. Um, there, there seems to be several problems, which is, you know, no one's sticking their hand up to play that big knock. Um, no one is... The decision-making is kind of safety-first decision-making. And also, when you're in and around the side, it's really difficult to figure out. And when I say that, you know, at press conferences, watch the mm-hmm. train, etc., it's really difficult to see... Who's the visionary behind this all? Who is our leader? Who is our Mahela? Who's our Arjuna? Who's our person who's kind of stepping up to do it? Um, because I, th- I think it's almost about self-preservation. I mean, I compared it to in the it, uh, in the press box when we were watching it. I was talking to Nick um, and to other people there, and I kind of felt it felt to me a bit like they were playing the role of the opposition of the Harlem Globetrotters, right? So their their whole role is kind of to kind of make it look like it's a it's a test match and it's a very important event. But at no point do they ever look like they're gonna win. But they always do enough to kind of keep you thinking maybe maybe we're gonna yeah. like they're not getting spanked by any like No, no, no. I think I think a couple things there, Mark, that I really have felt is right that t- test talisman, I think is so so huge right there's no doubt we have talented players there's no doubt we have players who are good enough to play in other squads in the world and you name them um you know apart from the 200s by root and the 100 by gus atkinson no other england batter scored a 50. the highest score apart from that was a 40. right and we had um what four or five 50s in our innings but no one went on and scored a hundred. No one scored that big hundred. And I think that's what you need your test talisman to do. That's what you have your Kane Williams for what Kane Williamson's for. That's what you have your Steve Smith's for. That's what you have your Virat Coley's for to stay there and plunder the runs and just keep on scoring. Right. And I think that's, that's something. And, and part of me is, is curious how much of that is a lack of practice, right? They haven't played test cricket and, six months. So that hunger for runs, that ability to sit there and play a long innings. Right. And I, I don't even know how much domestic cricket, um, particularly aimed at longer format these guys have played in the intervening months. So that hunger to stick around and play more, play long innings to play a two, 300 ball innings may not quite be there yet. Right. Um, and then in terms of vision, right, as you said, Mark, if you look at the strength of this team, it's definitely a batting side, right? You named, you know, you've got guys who've, who've played many, many test matches who are batters first. And on that first day at Lords, when you have good conditions, you say, okay, Demoth, Angie, Chundi, DDS, carry us. Get us to a score of 400. Get us something good on the board and let's get runs, right? And I think this comes down to responsibility and and... I think this might be a good time to talk about the DDS decision to bat second, right? I think that makes total sense um, of their mentality because DDS said he wanted to give the younger opening batters, right? Madushka, who's batting at two, and and Nisanka at three, a little bit of a rest and allow them to see conditions and how to play. But I think what you should be saying as captain is, hey, this is our strength. We should be batting first and we should be looking to score runs. And they should be telling Madushka and Nisanka, especially when they're backed up by a tremendously experienced middle order, go out there, look to score runs. Don't worry if you get out early. We've got your back. We've got the guys and we've got the conditions to score big, big runs. Right. That, to me, was the right decision. And that's what DDS did that first test match. So we can also see a regression from that first test match to that second test match where we're saying, okay, we're going to bat first. We're going to get runs on the board to now, okay, maybe we'll wait and see, and then we'll come in and repair. And I think it also says something about the mentality. Should I play play the clip of how he said, I think, I think you're going to hear a bit of Rex Clementine at the beginning of this as well, asking the question. A lot of people wondering what made you do bull first after in the first uh, and the space expression. Well, you know, our photo was probably in the last match, so I think I need to give them a break then uh, let's see what the pitch doing and then then we'll have a bad back, back team or team work at all. 
he's just being a nice guy there, isn't he? We don't need nice guys in that role, though. No, absolutely. The pressure should be on the batting order to make runs when the conditions are good, right? Um, and I think it's more pressure if you're Nishan Madushka and Patham Nasanka, right? Young test players to come in after the other guy just scored 400 and say, okay, now you've got to see off the new ball and make sure that we score big runs here, right? Whereas you say, okay, play your game, play free. These are good batting conditions, score runs, right? And it's not a mentality of we are taking the game by our throat, we're on control, and we're going to dominate from day one, right? We're immediately starting on the back foot. And that's just, you know, again, connected to what you said, Mark, leadership, right? And I don't know if we can say that about DDS. I think it's a bit unfair to call his captaincy poor, but I think the absence of a full-time head coach combined with players playing for their individual spots means that no one can really sit down and say, this is how we want to play cricket. This is our brand of cricket. And this is how we're going to approach every innings, right? It seems like, and and um, we can talk about the Nisanka selection in a bit, which I, I have no problem with. We're looking for quick fixes. We're looking for the magic bullet that will fix everything, whether it's batting second, whether it's bringing in Nisanka, instead of realizing that to develop competitively as a test cricketing nation, it requires us to actually be forward thinking, to be aggressive, to have delineated roles, to back players, to do well. And I think that's what is missing, any type of large scale vision. Um, and again, we talked about Kusal Mendes. I, I don't have a problem with him being dropped on form, but he was also named vice captain at the beginning of this tour. He was expected to play a huge role in this tour and he didn't have a great game with the bat, admittedly, in the first test. But if you're willing to just drop him because everyone's shouting and, and, and crowing that um, if Mendes isn't dropped, this is a disaster, what, what kind of thinking is that, right? you got to back the guy you, named, you just named as vice captain, right? Or don't name him for vice captain in the first place. So it shows a lack of conviction, a lack of um, sort of aggressiveness in the way they're playing cricket. They're just trying to, as you kind of said, Mark, be the Washington generals and say, okay, we'll be competitive-ish, but we're not going to take the game to you. And and, and that's that's a mentality thing, I think. Yeah, I, I mean, it, we were trying to figure out who's making the decisions, right? Um, because what we heard in the press box through kind of various leaks... I suppose you can call them leaks. Um, is that Ian Bell wanted to, you know, he's the batting coach who's played at Lords more than anyone else has in the Shrunker team or set up. He wanted to, he thought it was a good idea to bat first. And other people in the team decided it wasn't. But it's, it's an inch, like, yeah, I just, I just think they've lost vision. Like, Whatever you think about basketball, whatever you think about um, Brendan McCullum or Ben Stokes or Ollie Pope as a captain or, yeah. you know, Joe Root, Joe Root's never scored any test runs in Australia or Bangladesh. Whatever you think about all that, yeah. England, the English test team have a vision and a way that they want to play and they have a culture within it that educates their d- decision making, right? Where this Sri Lanka test side is basically running off vibes. And the, the sad, like, I would be okay with that if there was no chance of us being competitive. Well, I think the difference between us being competitive and not is us having actual plans. Like too yeah. many times, and you saw, you saw that with Root, where they just appeared to have no plan. They just kind of hope they can get out everyone else around him. Um, yeah, whoever's even at the other end. Wait till the, wait till the new ball, right? Which was yeah. what happened in that first innings where it was like, okay, they got through 60 good overs, right? They have England at 216 for six. And then they just ran out of ideas for how to get through root in the tail. And then by the, you know, 73rd, 74th over, it just looked like, okay, it will bowl come into a little bit and just get that new ball as quickly as possible. And I think, Mark, two, some of those things are, one, right, this idea that we need quick fixes, short-term thinking, that we need to appease a fan base, we need to appease the minister as quickly as possible and take these um, sort of short-term based decisions, right? It, and we'll see what happens in the next match because I think there are a couple decision points that I think we'll talk about, um, particularly like what do we do with Madushka right now that he's failed twice? 
Um, but also this idea that um, we we haven't played that much and our players are not fit enough to do some of the things we need them to do, right? So playing a long innings is about concentration and fitness, right? And these guys get out to 80, 90, in the most case, 120 balls and then get out, right? Whereas we've seen the longer you hang around, the more easy it's going to be to score runs. And at the same time, our bowlers, right, they, they bowled really, really well for those first 60 overs. It was they had a game plan, they executed it. And then finally, when they ran out of gas and ran out of extra plans, it all came apart. Right. And you have to have some, some plan B, some second answer to how you're going to deal with that. And, and the lack of playing test cricket means that when they get to 60 overs and they haven't bowled someone out, they're thinking, Oh my gosh, what do we do now? Our bowlers are tired and all of our good ideas have been expended. So I think part of it is exercising that muscle. And I'm curious um, and we'll talk about this again later on as these three big test stores come up, right? So New Zealand's coming to Sri Lanka. We're going to South Africa and we're going to New Zealand. Do they get better in terms of fitness? Do we see more developed game plans or do we continue to see the same mistakes being made? I think what they really desperately need to do as soon as possible is identify someone who could lead, who will lead the team. Not necessarily mm -hmm. as I'm not saying what needs. I actually don't think it needs a, a captaincy change. I think they need a a coach or a manager, a, a, a tall mentor or someone who's kind of got final say because I think at the moment they're just trying to play in this kind of six feet in front of their face opposed to going, right, this is how we plot a, a, a our day out if we lose a toss, this if we if we end up batting or if we end up bowling. This is how we, you know, this is how we're going to win the game over four days or five days. Uh, well, I, I think at the moment that's just not happening. They're just not doing the the, the work, the homework, um, almost, you know, in a kind of statistical sense um, of what to do afterwards. I think you're, it was just so obvious that the bowling after 60 overs was just absolutely fell off an edge, didn't it? A cliff edge. Um, and these are all, these are all annoying it's an, it's annoying because they those are these are all the easy parts of the game right the hard part is is getting a group of players who could play who have the skills to go out and score runs to go out and get wickets we've got those that's what other other test nations struggle to find people who can take wickets who can score runs we've got all that it's it's the other bit like putting it all together right, which right. should 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 be the easy bit this and is, there are you know, resources for it, right? You know, there there yeah. are models we can look to. There are other teams we can look at. And and part of me wonders too, right? Um, again, to go with the idea that this is a batting, that the strength of this team is batting, right? We're playing with seven batters and four bowlers. There's no all-rounder, right? So clearly we're saying we're looking to get runs. That's how we're going to win the game is by getting runs, getting scoreboard pressure, and then rolling them over but then we put the bowlers into bowl first on in great conditions and we put them in a condition in, in in a situation where they are not going to succeed right so so i'm willing to back any decision that any Lanka captain or any Lanka team makes if they can justify it right so they if they had good reason if they said we thought looking at the weather and looking at our our bowling stocks we thought we could get early wickets and get into them which is kind of what happened they weren't able yeah. to get the late wickets it's the problem with that first innings right um then i think fine for me that's okay but your decisions can't be based around we thought our, our openers were a bit scared i think that's that's kind yeah. of flawed thinking right, right. That's i think just, it... also that they're, they're doing there's a lot of hiding behind we don't play Test cricket that often. Should I could play That's about true. as much about as much test cricket as everyone other than the big three. So the big three generally play about I think about twelve test matches a year. Um yeah, 15. We play six to eight, right? That's the yeah. yeah. But that's kind of what everyone else around us does, right? We have other benefits. So our players will play much more or have the opportunity to play much more first class cricket than English players, for example. A lot of these English players will play two or three um county games all all season right well first class cricket 
I, you could argue that the standard's not as good. I probably think the, first, the standard of first class cricket in Sri Lanka won't be that far off county cricket. A lot of county cricket is, is not very good. Um, so I, I, I think we need to kind of stop height, like we need to stop their excuses. I also think, you know, it's I'm, I end up having to do lots of interviews where talking kind of. Where, where you know members of the English press go, why why aren't Sri Lanka winning? And they inevitably get lumped in with, with the West Indies and and other sides as well that are struggling with Test cricket around the world. And I kind of have to go. Actually, we don't have those problems. We don't have the same problems the West Indies do. If you decide to play red ball cricket in Sri Lanka and you get a central contract, you earn all right. Like you do, you do well. Yeah. Yes, I think it's true that our best players. Aren't gonna aren't playing red ball cricket at the moment, and probably never will play red ball cricket. They might have a token test. You know, Hasaranga might fancy a, a token series against Bangladesh or something. I don't know. At some point in this <laughs> career, Patarana, Patarana might at some point. You know, when when he's no longer required in the IPL, fancy two or three seasons of Test cricket. I don't know what's going to happen in the future, right? Um, but at the moment, the reality is, is our best, particularly bowlers won't be playing test cricket right that's that's not going to happen slc have known this for a little while they've actually i think they've done an okay job in terms of they're trying to bring through a load of players who are going to be red bull specialists you've got milan you've got vishra you've got asita who are going to be kind of red bull Prabath as well Prab- right. Prabath, yeah of course who's who's a red bull specialist that there's kind of systems in place it just for me is it's very easy for a shrunker fan to, to give all the excuses in the world but actually We've seen, we, we've had brushes with greatness when it comes to test cricket. And I kind of think with it doesn't need that much more fixing to get us into a position where we're not just turning up to, to lose with honour. We're well, actually turning up to be competitive with honour. Yeah. And I, I think, okay, so this is something where, again, we can look back and kind of assess where we are, right? So um, I tweeted this during the match. There are, I think, seven or eight players who have scored more than 300 runs in England in test cricket. Okay. Um, very few of them average above 40. Mahela averaged 35. Sunga averaged 41, but that's after a brilliant series in 2014 brought it to something good. Right. And it's tough for Sri Lankan batters to adjust to, to batting in England. Okay. Let's start from there. Right. Cause I, I, I think you're, you're on to something here. We know that. What we can't do is we can't show up on the back of a white ball series, right? One week after a series with India concludes, have half the team come to England, play a warm up match, and then go out there and play at Old Trafford. We can't have that. We have to, SLC has to find some way to get those players to play three, four, five games in England right? Or to have England say, hey, yes, we will play a test tour there, but we'd like to play a couple one day games beforehand. So the players can acclimate, the players can get used to playing in England can get used to the conditions. And they have to if they're going to continue to play test cricket and play test cricket in a meaningful way and be competitive, they have to take it seriously. I remember um, in 2023, when we lost to Pakistan at home, we had just played the um, one day World Cup qualifiers. Like three days later, we were off playing the first test against Pakistan. Pakistan had been in the country for weeks. They had been having a special test training camp for a month. And we weren't doing that. We can't just expect our players to show up, play a specialized brand of cricket, bat long, bowl long, if we aren't giving them the proper opportunities to do that if we're not letting them practice. Um, it's all well and good to say Sri Lankan batters don't do well in England. That's 100% true. It's tough to adjust technique. But give them a fighting chance. Allow them to have those warm-up games. Um, you know, we all heard what Dalip and, and Siddharth told Nick. They had seven warm-up matches before they played their one test. You've got to find some competition. You've got to get your players there, and you have to have them ready. And I think SLC has been doing a really poor job of that. We saw that again, and this is a different format, T20 World Cup. We have this series against Bangladesh in late March, early April. And then there's nothing going on for the next two months. We have one short little inter-island series, but then they're going and playing the World Cup. 
you know, you and Pakistan scheduled a series with England. They scheduled a series with Ireland. We absolutely have the ability to do more to prepare our players to do well. And if we know they're going to be facing these challenges, we have to do everything we can to acclimatize them to it. We can't ignore it and say, oh, yeah, well, uh, we're just expecting them to score runs at Lourdes. You cannot expect them to score runs at Lourdes. You cannot expect them to not get out early against the moving ball unless they played against it. And, um, and it comes down to. Sorry, Mark, that was a bit of a rant there. No, no, no. I, I agree with, with much of it as well. I, I think his... What can I say? I just, like... I mean, our, our job is to kind of come on and kind of critique what's happened and you know, say it was good or ba- what was good about it, what was bad about it. And I think, you know, there's at the moment, I'm just frustrated by it because I think it could just be so much better. And, and I don't think it needs that much more thought or thinking for it to be that much better. Um, I just feel like it's, it feels like it's going through the process. Yeah. Um, should, we t- should we talk about what might ha- happen at the ho- Oval? Who's going to... Yeah. Who's gonna? In, in hindsight, I think dropping Kusil Mendes was a bad decision, right? Because I think Madushka at some point could turn out to be quite a fearsome bat, but he's just not there at, at this stage in his in his career. I think DDS was right when he said Patton's the best batter on the island at the moment. Um, he's he's the form batter. Um, and I think when you've got, you know, we talked about a talisman. Kusil Mendes might be, I can't remember what he's averaging in the test, it's like 21 or something, right? Um, the thing is about him, he's got that kind of talent where you think he could he could hit 100, he could get a century, right? He just could do it. Um, and it was a bit of a shot in the dark, but I think actually with team selection at this stage, that's where we are, just all shots in the dark, um, keep, well, keeping him in or not. But I, I think you can also argue that either way. Well, I think it's a, it's a, you have to think about what is your long term plan. And this again gets back to long term planning. You've named Kusil Mendes vice captain and then you've dropped him after a bad first match, right? And he was hardly the only bat with a bad first match, right? Um, and I think you have these series of tests coming up. You should have goalposts in mind. You should say, okay, Nishan Madushka, he's young, he's early on in his test career. We are going to back him for the next 10 tests, no matter what. He scores, you know, four consecutive ducks. We believe in his talent so much that we're going to back him, right? Um, and we do have these kind of this kind of nice window, right, where when we punctuate with going to New Zealand, we can imagine that as our test season. And we should be setting out goalposts saying, who are the players we want to get into the team? What positions are we going to play? Let's not move them around. Let's let them get as comfortable as possible playing these eight, nine tests that they're going to have a chance to play. Right. And who gets protected in this? It's the seniors who get protected, the players who need least protection. Right. Um, Like Nishan Madushka, if he's in the squad and if he's a starter game one, should not be looking over the shoulder and thinking who's going to come in and replace me. Right. He should not be saying, oh, um, I was the opening bat the first game, and now I'm opening bat and keeping wicket, and now not keeping wicket again. Right? To, to keep to changing him, keeping changing him as wicket keeper effectively mid innings is quite wild. Yeah, like, exactly. Like that, and and that that tells you who, like you know, those younger players are being used as cannon fodder, and that's yeah. just not acceptable. Right. If you don't think Madushka is ready, then don't play him. Right. If you're if you think Madu, if you think Nisanka is the best batter on the island. Right. Which I think there is a good claim to be. I think he still has stuff to work on in test cricket, but that's fine. Put him in the squad from day one. Why are you why are you bringing him to England and then sitting him? Right. Again, it, go, it, it goes back to there was got vision, right? Yeah. Like Brendan McCullum likes having multiple jobs. Maybe he might take on. Being England coach and Sri Lanka Red Bull coach, coach at the same well, time, at the right? Same but there's, time. there's no right. This is a clear place where you can draw. You can say, okay, from now till the winter, we're going to be playing a lot of Test cricket. This is who our side is going to be. This is our fifteen, and these are the decision points. And this is where people are going to bat. And I'm worried. I'm really worried with this next Test. They're going to drop Madushka, right? And then what is that going to do for his confidence? What happens if Kissel doesn't score? Who starts against New Zealand? Right. Um, 
are they going to move Kamindu up? That's another question that's been coming. But to my mind, right, like, yes, he's he has the look of a future number three or number four. But why don't you just say for this test season, right, where he has adapted well to these conditions at that position and he's scoring runs from number seven, just let him do that through the rest of the year, right? To let him do that through the New Zealand series and then say, okay, new year, we're going to have a new approach. You can move up at three. Right. Give them some consistency so that they gain confidence and they score runs. They see runs coming off their bat and then give them space. Right. Don't do it in the middle of the series and say, OK, now you can move up. Right. You're like you're dropping te- uh, Patham Nisanka, whose technique has undergone a massive transformation to make him into a white ball beast. Right. He is not. And, and you've said this every podcast. He's getting more and more daring. He's getting more and more dynamic and then saying, OK, curb all of that that you've just been working at and bat at three in english conditions in the middle of a series not even you're not told that from day one right and you're protecting you know you're protecting these senior players why aren't you asking dds to come up a bat at three and i know people will say well he has a bad record at three but as seniors those are the guys who you should be asking to adapt and change who have the experience to rely upon to ask players to learn the game adapt and change on the spot while they're on an away tour is absolutely ridiculous. And and I'm really worried that um, that lack of vision is going to lead to just switching around these younger players because they can't push back against Sana, right? If they tell, if they tell um, Chundi, why don't you move up and bat at three, he can tell Sana no, and he's not going to get dropped. But Potham can't do that. Madushka can't do that. And, uh, you know, it, it's... I want to see them to back those young players who are going to be the core talent, right? And ask the seniors to do more. That's the way we should imagine it. Uh, Dom, should we leave it there? Because I feel like this has just been therapy for us. <laughs> um, yeah. This is- so maybe we should just say we should predict what changes are we are the two of us imagining for that test at the Oval. Uh, so I suspect that Kussel might be back in. I wonder if they're tempted to play Sadira instead of Kussel. I don't know. Um, I, when, when got over this, I'll tell you the funny story about how I, I thought Sadira always was how I made Sadira laugh because I had to, I accidentally jumped out of the way when he was in the nets because I thought <laughs> the ball was going to hit me. Um, and so I think he met, I think there's an outside chance he may come in. I don't know what they're thinking is. Um, and I suspect Cus and Rajta will get a go only because I think that the turnaround is too quick for our bowling unit to... Yeah. Yeah. And, so, and, and I think that's also, I, right, the idea of Millen is they wanted his runs. And he, he can bat. But, like, when you have seven batters, you shouldn't be relying on your eight to get your runs. Oh, yeah, the other thing I will add as well is he is by far and away our best fielder. He's an exceptional yeah. athletic, athletic. He's an exceptionally athletic person. Um, so oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know what they're fit like. As in, are are him and Asita ready to go for another f- four or five days? Mm. Can Kamara play two tests back to back quite quickly? Um, I don't know. So I think Rajthan might come in. Let's see. Um, yeah. And and he's um, been very good, you know. Like I think that's another thing. Why you? Why did you drop Kasan Rajatha, who has been, you know, with Asitha, one of your top two pace bowlers in tests, right? Another thing that you kind of have to think about. Um, and and Milan has impressed, but he has not impressed as a wicket taker, right? He's yeah. impressed as a lower order batter, as a fielder. He he has some skills, but still a long way to go. So you think Kusal will come in for Madushka? I think Kusal will come back in for Madushka, and, and I think they well, might just mix up the bowling. I'm just speculating on the bowling. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I, yeah. um, of course, it's the Oval, though, right? I mean, some great Sri Lanka have had some great performances there over the years. Of course, you'll remember um, Miralee's performance there. I think I was there when Kumar got 150 odd yeah. in an ODI. We've lost World Cup finals there. Um, Sanis' last game was at the Oval, if I yeah. remember correctly. We've chased Ambit. Right. Yeah. 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 
We, we, everything that can happen to a team has happened to Stroker at the Oval. It's quite a history, actually, thinking about it. I mean, I still think, going into this test, that there is a way Sri Lanka win this. They just need to get their minds on the same page. Because yeah. um, I, I think that's the problem. It's this it's this lack of how, how are we playing? What is our identity? What is our... Yeah. How do we win test matches? And I think, you know, there's, a, again, to, to look at it, they have things to plan for. They're going to be playing more test cricket in the next six months. So getting those plans in order, finding a way to not just be competitive, but to be the aggressor, to win, to put the other team on the back foot, right? And I think, and I'll, I'll, this will be my last thing and then I'll, I'll stop, is this is a general malaise that we see in Sri Lankan cricket is that we're always looking for the magic pill. We're looking for the short-term solution rather than saying, okay, this is how we play. We're going to play that way no matter what, right? And we're going to back our players to play that way, right? And we're going to develop players to play that way. And then we're going to win that way, right? It seems like we're like, okay, we're sort of close to winning. Let's move this piece here and move this piece there and then see if we can win rather than saying, this is our blueprint process over pro- uh, process over results. And we'll go from there. That being said, Mark, and we'll end on a positive note. After Bangladesh beat Pakistan, we are now up to number six in the world test rankings. Which is... uh, yeah. Firstly, we we should have a moment for Bangladesh cricket. We're we're bringing through this pain. We understand it. Um, You and Pakistan cricket. Pakistan cricket. Sorry. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Sorry. God, I'll go watch my math after this. Uh, A moment for Pakistan cricket. We've been through this pain. We know what you're going through. Um, oh gosh, I don't know. Like, I'm just be grateful we're not Pakistan fans at this moment. Um, we we have to yeah. save it up for that Pakistan Bangladesh Sri Lanka series. That would be, I mean, come on. If the ICC to me, wants to me, that that just sounds like pain, Dom. Pain that I don't need. I just give look. Give me another India series. Find time for India to come back or us to go there. That's all I want. I just want to play India for you. I'm joking. <laughs> I happily want to play everyone else. And also, I should add the rivalry with Bangladesh is one of the best things in cricket at the moment, and one of the best things and funniest things about drug and cricket. Um, yeah, thanks for that, Bangladesh. <laughs> and- <laughs> <laughs> um, boys, just go out, do it. Uh, if you've listened or you're watching and you've got this far, hit the subscribe button. You could you could also be watching us on um, our new partner site as well, which is called SriLankaSports.com. If you're watching us there, we're the Murali Ed. Come and find us. Uh, we are across all socials. And I will see you at the end of play every day in either the Trinity on day one or the Glad for the rest of it. Let's have a party. Win, lose, or draw. Let's let's own the oval. See you guys later. Bye. <laughs>